Hi, my name is Dr. Udramon and through the Oral Health Channel today we are going to be talking about pathological migration. Let's start. So today I'm going to be talking about a very important topic that is actually something that is not discussed amongst patients by doctors itself because of the fact that most of the people find the treatment of pathological migration very difficult. So pathological migration is basically when there is disruption of the forces that are falling on the teeth especially anterior teeth and that causes them to drift apart because of underlying periodontal disease or trauma from occlusion or any other reasons. The typical chief complaint that a patient might come to you with this uh, kind of a finding is basically that they feel that their teeth have become flared, they have moved apart, they have drifted apart and now they are showing signs of periodontal disease apart from the fact that it looks very disfiguring for the patient and it affects the quality of life. To be very honest, it's very simple. The periodontal disease actually, the process that actually happens kind of creates this kind of forces that become traumatic to normal occlusion and what happens because of the periodontal disease and the bone loss the teeth tend to drift apart especially the anterior teeth now this drifting apart and the success of treatment depends upon the distance measured between the contact point between the anterior teeth and the crest of the alveolar bone if it is about 5 mm you can still achieve that kind of you know uh, the success in the treatment to get them back together if the distance is about 6 mm, the odds become less and if it's more than 6 mm or 7 mm, it becomes even more difficult to get them back. Now, this is a multi-pronged approach that is required. So, the treatment approaches are three, basically orthodontic, restorative and periodontal. The first aim is to control the status of inflammation and the periodontal, you know, inflammation. The pockets need to be charted and you need to go for the pocket reduction therapy and the pocket removal therapy if at all. Mind you, if there are anterior recessions, the case becomes very complex and most likely you might not be able to undergo any sort of treatment apart from the restorative treatment and the periodontal treatment. The typical cases that are very amenable to these, uh, you know, treatments is very simple. You don't have much of recessions, but you have more of uh, the pocket depths that are persisting. And then you go for the periodontal intervention followed by the orthodontic treatment where you can after a couple of, you know, two, three months, where you have actually examined how immaculate the oral hygiene of the patient is. This is a very, very important statutory warning for all the people and the listeners there. If you are not keeping adequate oral hygiene, despite the fact that we have put in our best efforts, the treatment is most likely to fail. If for three months you are able to really maintain oral hygiene, the plaque control is actually good and immaculate, we can go ahead with orthodontic treatment using you know, continuous forces, slow forces, you know and not very heavy forces and try to bring those teeth together to the point it is possible in the end after the periodontal treatment and the orthodontic treatment if still some scope is left for improvement we take the help of the cosmetic dentist where we you know can design veneers and you know change the zenits and uh, go for the aesthetic crown lengthening and all those things depending upon the case and therefore you can get your smile restored the gross time is about uh, you know 20 months, 24 months, that's a big amount of time, that's a lot of time. But then again, if you want to get the things done, it's better you, you know, be patient about it. And I understand that it is a little bit of something of a harrowing experience in itself because you might, uh, if you have recessions, the case becomes complex and the success of the treatment also becomes, you know, a little difficult to achieve. So this was today's episode. Please like, share, subscribe and do press the bell icon for important updates. If you want to get in touch with me, here are my social media handles and my WhatsApp number. Kindly refrain from calling directly and I hope that whatever questions, queries, apprehensions, doubts and suggestions that you have, you can feel free to put them in the YouTube comment section. So that's it for today. Thank you.